Hi, for today's discussion, I will explain to you different terms related to crude drugs and the processes in the extraction of it. So let's begin with the definition of an official drug. It is any substance used in the diagnosis, prevention, mitigation, treatment of diseases of both human and animals which are recognized in an official pharmacopoeia or formulary. So all drugs which can be found in the United States pharmacopoeia or national formulary are considered official drugs. So the current version of the United States pharmacopoeia is USP 43 and the version of natural formulary is national formulary 38. An official drug, on the other hand, is any drug which has once been recognized as a drug in the pharmacopoeia but not described and included in the latest United States Pharmacopoeia and National Formulary or any official drug literature. Next is the active constituents. It is the ingredient or substance present in a pharmaceutical drug or substance that is from natural product. Example, your corn. So your corn contains constituents such as fatty acids, oils, polysaccharides, and many other compounds. Next is the inert constituent. It is the chemical compounds, though present in plant and animal kingdom, which do not possess any definite therapeutic values as such, but are useful as an adjunct either in the formulation of a drug. Example, your starch. It contains constituent which is important in production of other drug products and it is used as a diluent and thickener in making tablets. Next is the secondary plant constituents. These are plant products which are not of obvious nutritional value to plant development or herbivore nutrition and are often specific to distinct plant group. In other words, these are complex chemicals made by plants that are not essential to their life, so they can be used as protectors of plants against predators and microbes. For the primary metabolites, examples is we have carbohydrates and lipids. For secondary metabolites, we have glycosides, gums and mucilages, fixed oils, waxes, and volatile oils. We also have factors that can affect secondary plant constituents. We have heredity, ontogeny, and environment. So what is heredity? It is the genetic relationship between successive generations of organisms. Example, Japanese peppermint or the menta arvensis produces more menthol than the ordinary peppermint or the menta piperita, which means the variety of Japanese peppermint contains more menthol than the ordinary one. We also have the ontogeny, which refers to the development of an individual organism. Example, leaves of marijuana. So the young leaves has no tetrahydrocannabinol yet, but the matured one has tetrahydrocannabinol present. So tetrahydrocannabinol is the active constituent of your marijuana. Lastly, is we have the environment. So under this, we have the indigenous or plants that originate in a native place or country and naturalized are plants that grow in a foreign land or in a locality other than their native homes. Example, the Turas Tramonium. It was introduced in the U.S. but it is from Europe. Next is we'll proceed to the crude drugs. These are vegetable or animal drugs that consist of natural substances that have undergone two processes, which are the collection and drying. In preparing crude drugs, we have the following step. Collection, harvesting, drying, curing, garbling, packaging, storage, 
and preservation. So let's start with the first step. Collection. It is when a pharmacognosist acquire and seek the plant to be extracted. So in this step, we have the so-called collection time. It is to isolate the right type and right amount of constituent and to obtain a drug of a good quality. Example, there is a plant that may contain a substance in winter that is not present in summer or vice versa. Another thing is that there are plants in which the constituent may vary depending on the time when the plant was collected. Example, if you collect an unripe fruit, it may contain protopectin. When you collect a just ripe fruit, you will obtain pectin, but if you collect overripe fruit, it contains pectic acid. Next is harvesting. Harvesting may be done manually or by the use of machines, but if the plant drug is potent, you need to use manual harvesting so that the amount of constituent may not be altered. When you say potent, it means it produces strong effect even in low dose. Next is drying. Drying is done to ensure good keeping qualities for microbes to die because of decreased water because drying may lead to destruction of microorganism, to inactivate enzyme, and also to reduce the size and weight. So we also have methods of drying. Drying is carried out by either natural or artificial method. When you say natural, this is accomplished by natural air in sun or shade. But when you say artificial drying, this is a rapid method done at well-controlled temperature and is accomplished by direct fire, use of heated stones, or use of stoves. So we also have this advantage of natural drying. So drying should be done carefully to prevent damage or burning and excessive heat causes smoky odor. Next is curing. It is defined as the modified process of drying. So it is done to enhance the property of the plant principle. So this process usually takes one to two years or more. Next is garbling. It is a process of separation of the sample from extraneous matter. Take note, it is the final step in the preparation of crude drugs. We also have preservation. So it is when we add preservatives, if necessary, to avoid degradation of the substance. When you say degradation, it is the condition wherein the substance may result to lower quality. We also have packaging. It is when we protect the product against environmental condition such as moisture, heat, light, as well as from fungi, bacteria, insects, and rodents. So, we need to properly package and seal the drug product to protect it against adulteration. So, what is adulteration? It is the action of making the product poorer in quality by the addition of another substance. It is also a legal term, meaning that a food product fails to meet the legal standards. So we have different types of adulteration. First is sophistication or the true form of adulteration. So why it is called as the true form? Because there is deliberate addition of substandard material with the intent to cheat to get more money, so such materials are carefully produced and may appear at first sight to be genuine. We also have the admixture or the unintentional addition. So in this process, without knowingly, the substance is added to the preparation. We also have deterioration. So, destruction of active constituents due to aging. In other words, this type of adulteration is time-dependent. The longer the product is produced, the greater the possibility that it will deteriorate as time passed by. 
we also have alternative. So, formerly, it is known as the substitution type of adulteration. When you say alternative, there is intentional or total replacement of the article or the product. So, it is different from sophistication since cheating is involved in sophistication while in alternative, there is a substitution happening in the substance. So, you replace the drug with another substance which has the same effect or use. And lastly, we have the spoilage. So, it is a type of adulteration which is due to presence of bacteria and fungi. Another step in the preparation of crude drug, we have the storage. So, the main reason is to prevent insect attack which may lead to decreased quality of the product. So, we have different methods in storing. We have first, heating to 65 degrees Celsius. It is the simplest method to prevent the attack and effective especially for insect eggs which are not affected by insecticides. We also have adding few drops of chloroform to kill the eggs of insect. And lastly, adding of bromine is also a method to prevent insect attack. Let's proceed to the drug evaluation. It refers to any process by which toxicity, metabolism, absorption, elimination, preferred route of administration, safe dosage range, and other information for a drug or group of drugs is determined through clinical assessment in humans or veterinary animals. In short, drug evaluation is a process where we evaluate the properties and effects of the drug through testing humans or veterinary animals. So we have different methods for drug evaluation. First is we have the organoleptic it is the evaluation via sense organ. So in this method, we use our senses such as smelling, seeing, and touching to evaluate the drug. We also have the microscopic. It is the identification of pure powder drug using microscopes. Biologic, the use of living organisms to determine drugs' pharmacologic activity. Next is chemical. It is the best method for the determination of official potency. And lastly, physical method, an application of physical instruments to the active principles of drugs. So, for the biologic method, we use the following test animals. So, the animal use in testing digoxin is dog. For the oxytocin, we use chicken. For the atropine, we use cat. For heparin, we use sheep. For cod liver oil, we use rachitic rat. And for tubocurarin, we use mice. So drugs are also classified according to its morphology, taxonomy, therapeutic or pharmacologic application, or the chemical constituents. When you say morphology, it is according to the parts used. It can be the leaf, the flower, the fruit, the bark, and so on. When you say taxonomy, it considers the natural relationship between plants and animals. When you say therapeutic or pharmacologic application, it is where drugs are grouped as they are employed medicinally. And when you say chemical constituents, it is based on the constituents present in the plant. So it can be lipids, carbohydrates, fats, waxes, glycosides, alkaloids, tannins, or many other more. So we have the percolation method in the extraction of crude drugs. Under percolation, we have three terms, the mark, the menstruum, and the percolate. The mark is the undissolved portion of the drug that remains after the extraction process is completed. It is also known as the residue. Menstruum, on the other hand, is the solvent used to extract the active principles, and percolate is the extracted substance or the filtered substance.
So the menstruum used in extracting fats is we have the hexane. Acetone is used to extract chlorophyll. Alcohol is used to extract resins. Vinegar is used to extract solanin. And hot benzene used to extract chrysarobin. We also have the maceration. It is where solid ingredients are placed in a stoppered container with the prescribed menstruum and allowed to stand for a period of 48 hours in a warm place with frequent agitation until soluble matter is dissolved. So take note, in the maceration, 48 hours. Next is the infusion. It is where you macerate solids for a period of time, either hot or cold water, for 5 to 10 minutes. And lastly, we have the decoction. It is where drugs are subjected to boiling in water for 15 to 20 minutes, then undergo the process of cooling, straining, and passing sufficient cold water through the drug. So that's the end of this discussion, and I hope you watch the next video which is about the carbohydrates.